Hello everyone, this is a demo video for software defined networking for intelligent data movement project for cloud computing course. Today I'm going to talk about our demo where we will try conduct real research experiment in real time. The purpose of this experiment show the difference between uh, conventional network and network with software defined networking part. To make it clear what's the difference between regular network and network with software defined networking part, I'd like to talk uh, uh, about our logical architecture. We may see four main components application, user interface, unified resource broker, and the network. So this part where we have uh, user interface, unified resource broker is can be treated as our control plan of Bayesian product. The lower level application and network can be considered as regular network. So the difference between regular network and network with SDN, former doesn't have this control plan. So um, in our demo we are going to use our control plan to dynamically provision circuits across the network and improve data transfer. We are using research application which tracks some uh, object as our benchmark for our network. The reason we are using it, it reads some data from local folder where we send uh, data uh, from some remote uh, repository and tries to send as much as possible for time it takes to initialize. In the top uh, left corner you may see number of processed frames so we use these numbers as our as our quality of application to provide our experiment we use next topology allocated engine here you may see that all we have three hosts and three switches all links between switch to switch as have 100 Mbps bandwidth and <coughs> all links between host to switch have 200 Mbps bandwidth. We are using this topology in order to demonstrate how our dynamic circuits provisioning helps to orchestrate traffic which go through this network so that we will host our application host one and we will send our data and we will send data for this application from host 3. Moreover, we are going to send uh, data from host 4 to host 3 as a concurrent traffic or cross traffic. These three switches are open flow software switches and they allow us control how control um, data traffic in the network. We use software switches for two reasons. First, uh, we may configure it as any device so they can act as a router or they can act as a regular layer 2 hardware switch. In our experiment they will act as a first as a regular uh, layer 2 hardware switch with spanning tree algorithm to avoid loop routes. On the second stage, or on the second step, we will use them for to dynamically push the circuits across this network. Here is our experiment plan where we first we will start sending data from host 4 to host 3 as our concurrent traffic. Then we start sending data from 
host 3 to host 1 as our main traffic for the application. Then we will uh, run our application and we will measure number of frames. And it will be our quality of application metric. On first step, we will perform concurrent hypertest or we will simultaneously test speed between host 1 and host 3 as well as host 4 and host 3. So first we are going to run our box controller. As you may see, we will run it in L2 learning, which means our switches will act as learning switches with spanning tree algorithm. So now we are going first to start sending our concurrent traffic. Then we will start send our main traffic. Then we will launch our application. Okay, let's start. Start sending concurrent traffic, main traffic, launch application. So we may see that we are sending data concurrently. And our application starts reading data right now. So we are able to count how many frames we may be able to process right now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, <coughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Okay. We process twenty-four frames. So now we need uh, estimate our bandwidth. So our host to access server in this case and we again start with concurrent traffic. Start measure concurrent traffic, then measure our main traffic. Now you may see that we measure bandwidth between host 1 and host 3, host 4 and host 3 simultaneously. And the results for our connection between host 1 and host 3 is 45 Mbps. So we will try to improve this bandwidth with using on-demand circuits provisioning and <coughs> we will try to improve quality of application in terms of number of frames. So now we are going to launch a different controller with neighborhood method in order to dynamically provisions and set up circuits across our network. As I mentioned earlier, to dynamically provision circuits in the network, we implemented user interface. Where now we are going to log in as in administrator mode. So this is our basic implementation of user interface where we may request some virtual links, specify some bandwidths. So if we try to dynamically establish paths between host 1 and host 3 with some requested bandwidth, it first gets failed. The reason for this Host 1 and host 3 currently unknown for our controller. So controller is used uh, dynamic discovery service. Initially it knows only about switches. To know about hosts, we need to um, do some operations. We do simple ping from each of the hosts. Now we should be able to see mm, 
Now our controller should know about these hosts. So let's try update our page. And yes. So now we see that our host 1 and host 4 attached to switch 1. Switch 3 has connection to host 3 and we have switch 2. And we see that our available bandwidth is equal to capacity on each link means we didn't allocate any virtual links. So let's request required circuits from host 3 to host 1 we are going to send data so and we specify and we may specify bandwidth so from host 4 to host 3 we want let's say 8 we use different bandwidth here to show that we provide guaranteed quality of service without over provisioning so we want to provide 100 mbps okay now we see that both virtual links are located and we have total if we updated total 117 mbps and we requested 260 so now let's repeat our experiment with the application <coughs> First, we may start up result data transferring to confirm that we don't have local data. So you may see no image data. So we again, we'll start with sending um, our concurrent traffic, then sending our uh, main traffic, and then run application. Starts concurrent traffic, starts sending our traffic and then start our application. So last time we've got 24 frames. Now hope we will get more than that. Okay, our application <coughs> started. Oh, let's count three, four, five, six, nine, ten, twelve, sixteen, Yeah, we already see that we may uh that our application process more data means we were able to transfer more data for the same period of time the reason for this it was so total number of frames 43 in this case so the reason for this uh, we avoid collision in our topology uh, by orchestrating data flows so the last step is the bandwidth test we again uh, going to use our host tree as a server and we will connect to it from host 4 and host 1 again we will start from host 4 and then from host 1 <coughs> so again we are looking for boundaries of this connection so as we may see we obtained 90 in BPS so the amount we requested and eight for different link you may see here 90 and 80 so basically it means uh, we didn't waste our resources and we provide the same amount of resources as we requested Finally, we will find our results here. So you may see an unknown SDN case. We were able to gain just 45 Mbps as our quality of service and 24 frames as our quality of application.
whoever is the end allows us increase uh, this values up to 19 bps for quality of service and 43 frames for quality of application on the same uh, network resources so that was uh, our main conclusion that SDN greatly helps uh, increase quality of application uh, due to uh, increasing of quality of service.